Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the different types of heading. Uh, we're going to be exploring the concept of track, course, magnetic heading, uh, deviation, and all those other good things that you have to deal with uh, when you want to figure out where the aircraft is pointing versus uh, where you think the aircraft should be pointing. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first things first is uh, when you jump inside of an airplane, uh, you probably notice a couple different instruments for the purposes of determining what direction we're traveling. Uh, the first one we typically have is a directional gyro. In some aircraft, this is an HSI. Now, some aircraft, of course, on pretty much every aircraft, has also a magnetic compass. Now, where it gets interesting is these two are very, very useful in determining which way the aircraft is pointing. However, things get complicated very, very, very quickly. As a matter of fact, if I scroll my head over to our little GPS, I'll go ahead and use the bottom GPS because it's going to be a little bit clearer for what we're taking a look at here. You're going to notice that we have a DTK, which is desired track, and you also notice that is different from our physical track, which is going to be different from the way the aircraft is actually pointing. So what I'm actually going to do real quickly is I'm going to grab my handy dandy wind here, and I'm actually going to shift it to give it a true crosswind sort of a nature, just to make things a little bit more exciting for us. So I'm going to go ahead and take it. Uh, we're traveling uh, mostly southwest here, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of a uh, 300 degrees, just to make things a little bit more interesting to us, to make the effect a little bit stronger. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave the gust alone, but I'll go ahead and put that in the same direction as well. Now you're probably going, well, why are you doing that? Uh, it's because I want to go ahead and demonstrate what this is. So first things first, uh, let's take a look at the difference between uh, magnetic and true heading. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. I'm going to go pop up our little nav map real quickly, and you can go ahead and take a look at this. So on a normal flat chart, uh, if we're traveling between uh, two particular positions, uh, the heading that you are traveling on can either be magnetic, referring to what your compass heading is, or towards a reference to magnetic north, or it can be true in reference to if you were to take the Earth as an actual globe and treat it as if it's in the same exact orientation, where the North Pole, the true North Pole is in the center at the top, and the true South Pole is in the center at the bottom. Now there is a difference depending on what part of the world you travel on between those two headings. Now, if you take a look at an actual sectional chart, you'll notice that my lines of longitude and latitude are perfectly perpendicular to each other. That's because on a conventional projection for a map, uh, when you're using, I should say, chart, we should be always more specific in that regard, we always plan as if we were working in a true heading. And that means if we were to take one of these uh, lines right here of my lines of longitude and kept following it all the way vertically, it would take us all the way to the North Pole. And again, that's going to be the true North Pole, not the magnetic North Pole. Unfortunately, like I was saying, that you have something called magnetic uh, variation, which basically means that is the difference between where that would be going to the true North pole and where it is to the magnetic north pole. So if you take a look at my chart real quickly, you'll notice you get these things called isogonic lines every once in a while. You'll see, for example, this one's 13. If I scroll over to this one here, you'll notice this one's 14 with a W. If I keep scrolling over in this direction, you know, you're going to notice it's going to get up to 15 degrees and a W. That refers to the difference between those two particular headings. So in this case, uh, if you actually take a look at my little chart here, it says I need to travel 204 degrees magnetic in order to get to my particular destination. Um, the actual actual true course is going to be that particular value minus whatever our particular variation is. In this case, our true heading, if we were traveling in a place with no magnetic variation, would be 190 degrees. However, because of the variation, it's going to put us on a heading of 204 degrees. So if we pop over to our little nav map again, you'll notice that we also have a very, very similar kind of direction here. Now, here's where things get sort of interesting. Now, in our aircraft, uh, we don't have an unlimited number of tools for determining what our heading is. As a matter of fact, we only have our directional drive and our compass on board. Because of that, this instrument is only ever going to show us magnetic heading, which means if we want to use this as our basis for heading, and we want to use this as kind of a repeater. By the way, the reason we have two of these is this thing jiggles around quite a bit when you're accelerating and decelerating and getting bumped around. This stays pretty darn stable. We're going to need to make sure we always calculate all of our courses dealing with that. Now, that's going to be our difference between our headings. Again, our true heading is going to be as if there was no magnetic variation. Our magnetic heading is going to be whatever our compass indicates. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, wait a minute. Can we take our directional gyro and point it towards our true heading? The answer is absolutely. If you've ever done grid navigation, you can. We can actually sit here and crank this to go ahead and dial this so that it faces where we would actually be facing true. But the problem with this method method now is how do I know how to update this when the compass, or I should say the directional gyro, starts precessing? I could always come back up to the compass and do the subtraction, but that gets very inconvenient very, very quickly. So that's why typically your directional gyro is going to be dialed in to what you have. And uh, some aircraft, they actually have special tools that can scan this instrument, determine where it's pointing, and then feed that into your directional gyro to update 
and you can even dial in the local magnetic variation so it will actually give you a true course. Um, people who work up in the North Pole especially or anything close to the poles where we have extreme amounts of um, basically arcing because of the way the charts are projected will uh, find that they're going to be working in true heading all the time. Now, now that you kind of know the general gist between those two, um, what about track versus heading? Now, if you know now, now, again, our magnetic heading is where the compass says that we're posting right now, which is not our true heading because there's variation. Now, what about track? Again, I sound a little redundant. Sorry about that. So track is the place along the ground that the aircraft is actually traveling. So if I actually look at the aircraft straight down, you'll notice that the aircraft is shifting gently to the tr uh, left here. So even though my tr uh, heading here is about uh, 225 degrees, my actual track across the ground is at an angle to that 225 degrees. So my track and heading are only ever the same, only, 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 if there's absolutely no wind. So if I actually take a look over here, you'll notice my track right now is 213 degrees, whereas my compass and my magnetic heading is 225 degrees. So that's actually kind of interesting because if you actually take a look at my little magenta line here, let me zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that my nose is actually pointing that 15 degrees difference in order to maintain a constant track along the ground, which will take us to our destination. If you actually take a look down here at the lower part of my GPS, you can actually see my desired track here is 213 degrees, and my actual track is also 213 degrees. Now, the, this is where it's kind of get a little complicated. So track is where we're going along the ground, course is where we desire to go along the ground if you want to kind of think about it another way so for example on my present course would put us at 215 degrees which is also our track even though the aircraft itself is pointing to the right of that in order to compensate for the wind now if you go pop over to the little nav map a little bit this makes it even more clear exactly what we're doing so this line right now again we're working with a mercator projection let me go ahead and pop it up real quickly so you guys can see that pretty clearly ah there we go now we got a regular thing so you can kind of see everybody else because of our current projection actually leave it on plane mode you can see that this is going to be our magical it's about 212 degrees magnetic now if i flipped the projection to on a globe watch what happens to all my stuff do you notice that this line has shifted let me go ahead and I'll grab this real quickly so you can see it again you can actually watch as it shifts because of that different uh, projection that you're using on the map ah this gets very very complicated very very quickly another thing i want to worth showing you is uh, just because your magnetic heading is one thing at the beginning of a particular course line does not mean that the magnetic heading will stay the same as a matter of fact if i were to come over here from uh, francis green let's say i want to measure some distance you'll notice i'll measure distance from here that as I move my mouse across here, you'll see it starts at a magnetic heading of 285, but as I drag it this way, you can actually watch the magnetic heading change as it tries to move itself across that arc. If you actually look at that line, I'll hold that line as straight as possible. You can see my initial magnetic heading is 286, and by the time I get to my destination, the magnetic heading becomes 283. But what you also probably are noticing, if you're very, very quick, is that my true heading remains basically the same on either point. Now, this is where it gets real fun. Now, if I were to pop up here a little bit, let's go up here. Ah, this looks like fun. Yeah, let's go way, way, way up here. Zoom out. Ha ha, here we go. Now watch what happens when I do something like that. So again, I'll go ahead and take my mouse. We're very close to the pole. Notice to go from here to here, which is 10 nautical miles, I've already lost one degree of magnetic heading. Let's go ahead and drag it 60 miles. And you can actually start to see the curvature of my line as I start pulling myself away. But you can see my magnetic heading has an amazing change because of the combination of variation as well as the fact that I'm so close to the pole. Now, an interesting thing is if you actually change the projection to spherical, now you're going to be seeing this uh, straight lines as opposed to curved lines because now we're projecting it on an actual globe. So now we're going to confuse you just a teeny tiny bit more. Again, remember your magnetic course, your magnetic heading, your track, your ground track. So now we're going to confuse you a little bit tiny bit more. Some of you have probably heard the concept of deviation. Now, deviation is not variation. Deviation refers to the fact that a little compass right here is uh, not immune to changes in position in the presence of magnetic fields. Unfortunately, aircraft is a giant ball of metal here. So that's going to cause this to actually read incorrectly depending on what's going on. Now, it makes this even more complicated. Some aircraft have uh, prop heating. Of course, when you put a lot of electricity through a propeller, it's going to cause a tremendous magnetic field which is going to shift this over time when it's running. As a matter of fact, most aircraft are equipped with something called a compass correction card, which will simply say, this is the direction you desire to go, and this will tell you where you need to actually point the plane in order to compensate for all the magnetic fields that exist inside the aircraft itself. In this case, if we wanted to travel north, 
we'd actually be staring at 359. So if this thing read north, we'd actually have to dial this in to one degree less of north in order to actually travel magnetically towards the north. You'll notice that the effect here isn't that strong with this aircraft. The worst one, of course, is uh, 240. I have to actually point the plane at 243 in order to safely actually travel in the direction of 240 magnetically. Now, oh man, does this get complicated because what will happen is you'll calculate your wind, you will calculate your heading, you'll calculate your course, and then you'll have to go and correct for it based on where you actually need to point the aircraft. And again, fortunately in Flight Simulator, that effect here is not simulated. There are probably some aircraft that are add-on aircraft that do simulate that particular function. Okay, so a lot of information. Uh, the most important thing you need to basically know is uh, whatever you're using, stick to it. Keep in mind that your track along the ground may not be the way you're heading on the aircraft. In this case, you can see very clearly that my desired track is 213, but my nose is pointing at 225. That's a 12 degree difference because of how strong the crosswind is. Understanding that concept is going to get you a lot of trouble too, because uh, let's imagine, for example, we have an airspace that starts right here. Just because uh, my aircraft is pointing in the correct direction doesn't mean that it won't drift into that airspace. So it's very important you always mentally consider where your track across the ground is going to take you versus where your actual heading is. Enjoy.